Well, let's hear from BG Trading. Hope you are well. Today is July 3rd, 2023. We have just entered into FY24, the new financial year. Also entering into uh, earning or reporting season, which we'll see all the ASX listed companies reporting its earnings for FY23. We are hoping uh, to have a great a journey for the next few uh, three months and and obviously we're trying to select here stocks that could uh, offer a potential upside before they actually start rallying again this is the idea of this channel not to come up when the stock has rallied 100 to 100 percent but before we have a considerably uh, good rally i'm going to exploit uh, the fundamentals of CD Cheek Collective and the technical aspect of the stock as well. So be free to uh, pass and go straight into what you really wanted to see. So let's have a look. I just want to remind you, this is a finance advice. It's just as from BG Trading, sharing with you how we apply our strategies to know when to buy and when to sell stocks, how we set up targets, how we uh, use our strategy to uh, target uh, 20 to 40% within a one to three months lead time. And obviously, trade the same stocks or different stocks over and over again in order to have a consistent result throughout the year. I also like to invite you to become a member of our free Facebook community, Buy, Grow and Sell Strategy for Share Traders. Also wanted to, uh, to thank everyone that came on board with the end of financial year VIP membership offer. Really hope to have a great journey forwards to the next 12 months. It is very exciting times ahead especially if we are or we are close to the pivot of interest rates or the peak of the interest rate cycle. I'm going to jump first uh, into the stock analysis. Obviously, uh, if you are a VIP member, you have access to uh, the stock analysis. Stock analysis of stocks that we believe could have a good potential and then obviously the entry details, trading considerations uh, and every single detail they need to be aware of uh, in terms of trading a particular stock. So uh, City Chick is a retail fashion company. The company owns some uh, leading brands all across the globe in a major market. And uh, this analysis is based on a key tree market update that was uh, released in May 22, 2023. And also we took some information from the latest half financial year report that was released in uh, February this same year. Obviously, we uh, put it together this information based on the information that we have, but we really need to look into uh, forward as well to what's going to happen in the full year of 2023. We only have a guide as well. We only, uh, have the information from actually the first nine months of the year. We haven't actually seen what's happened into the last three months of the company. So just so you understand what's happening with this company, it used to be profitable, it used to be profitable as you can see right here. In FY22, the company uh, has reported a $22.27 million profit, net profit. Uh, we have revenue uh, around $369 million. As you can see here, this is exactly what we wanted to look into a, when we are buying stock. And this is why it's so important to, uh, to look into what has been happening in the past, but most important, what's been happening within the last 12 months. And what is the pros uh, prospect for the company moving forward? And this stock is a classic example of a, a company that we're really uh, worth us looking at and understanding why the stock price has uh, collapsed from all the way from uh, $7 pretty much to $0.37 cents or $0.36 cents and a half. 
that is currently trading. So that based on those uh, reports and those numbers, the company from being profitable uh, in FY22 and FY21 and FY20 and FY19, it became a net loss company with the first half, the half one of FY23, alone losing $27 million. And uh, most of this loss, and we'll start digging into uh, the, the reports to find out where this loss came from. Most of the loss was generated because uh, extremely high levels of inventory. And obviously they had wings uh, uh, across the globe as a result of a high inflation and high interest rates. People stop spending or shrink spending, and then obviously uh, that becomes an issue for the company. But in this particular case, we have seen a huge inventory that, uh, that still needs to be digested. And that's exactly what the company addressed in into uh, the latest uh key tree financial uh, market update. But I made some highlights here just so you want, uh, you can understand a little bit more what's uh, what's happening. Um, okay, the first highlight is in terms of revenue by channel, online sales have experienced a decline of 23, 23% compared to the prior year. Okay, so obviously when we had to, the interest rates are going really down like um, record lows, everyone had a lot of money. And, 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 and when the company reported FY22 was based on half of 22 and the second half of 2021, which was a peak of the injection of the money into the economy. <laughs> what did they do? They invest a lot into boost the inventory because sales were I was coming in like crazy, like most of retail uh, uh, companies. We saw that in Kogan as well and other companies or similar companies, and they all have been suffering over the last twelve months as a result of high inventory costs. And that obviously, inventory cost is one of the key elements for this type of business and they have to manage the inventory effectively and that's exactly what they are proposing uh doing from now on uh moving forwards to fy24 uh most important and that's what i want to highlight here is uh even though uh the revenue was a uh, low uh there was decline uh, compared to revenue of last year it is still it's still 12 percent high compared to FY21, and this is the online sales uh, only, which is a very interesting. Obviously, there was the abnormally of uh, COVID, uh, ultra low interest rates, but now back to compared to when the interest rates was uh, like a in uh, it's still going down, um, so it's not too bad. Then it's Store, uh, store sales have shown a positive growth of 6.2% compared to a prior year. Obviously, we had lockdowns and everything. So we all know that. But a decline of 86 compared to FY21. So still I think is a decline. But now people with COVID, people have learned to shop online. People are more likely to shop online than ever before. That's what I think here. And that's why one of the key strategies moving forward for this company is to invest a lot more into online uh, stores and online uh, interface to get more online sales. So partner sales have uh, seen a significant increase of 23.1% compared to the prior year and a substantial growth of 418% compared to FY21. So that's that's pretty good. That's where I wanted to focus into because if these guys go, uh, they go online a big time, I think uh, we could see a, um, a much better performance of this business moving forward. Also, um, according to uh, the latest market update, City Chick has announced that its current debt facility of $46.5 million has been amended. There will be a staged reduction in the facility limit to $21.5 million by the end of 2024, along with extension of the current 
covenant requirements through Q1 to FY25. So they reduced, but they extended. So I've been clever because they are now sort of reducing the levels of inventory. You're going to pay less interest rates and potentially uh, become profitable again. Not sure when it's going to be. That's why we want to see what's happening with FY23 uh, finance report and the earning guidance for FY24 as well. So a strategic review. The company is undertaking a lot of strategic review in order to return the business to a profitable uh, growth with focus in high value, uh, high volume, uh, volume products and optimizing customer choice. So that here are some of the highlights here that the company is sort of uh, looking at at the moment. But one of the things really uh, got my attention is uh, about logistics because uh, every time I'm analyzing a retail uh, company like this or online shopping retail store, so we want to see what's happening behind the scenes with the logistics because that's where majority of the cost of this company is. And that's probably where they are uh, essentially in uh, brand terms, uh, losing money at the moment. And that's exactly where they came from as well. A massive inventory with a lot of warehouses. What are they doing? They're cutting, they're trimming the number of uh, warehouses. In fact, they're, they're closing seven warehouses and uh, and they sort of are getting to uh, one a massive space using what they call automated 3L, a 3PL facility in US. So obviously this is uh, for US, but there's a lot other uh, other warehouses. Uh, the same technology, and then obviously that should help them to shrink the cost. Also, they are sort of reviewing its uh, freight, logistic, a uh, suppliers and becoming a lot more cost effective as well in their regards. And uh, this all combined should bring a uh, cost, uh, cost the cost of the uh, the sales a lot lower than it has been over the last twenty four months, especially when um, when the company was trading during uh, post COVID period, which or actually during COVID period, which everything went nuts sales are booming so what happened is um you just want to expand as as quick as you can but then okay sometimes you really have to think about uh okay is this a sustainable expansion and that's what we saw in most of those uh retail stocks you know? anyway now uh, so the, uh overall they're simplifying its logistics okay Okay, here's some numbers as well. So you can see some sales revenue, what, what's happening with sales revenue uh, for uh, first half of FY21. First half of FY22 was huge and the first half of FY23. So obviously revenue is still increasing in comparison to FY21 and FY20, which is good. Only last year, and again, result of, of a lockdowns and a lot of injection of money on the economy, only last year, financial year, the company has done, uh, like has actually achieved its peak. And then obviously a uh, result of the, the current fall on stock prices, the company now is net loss and no longer a net profit, profit company. We wanna see what's happening on the second half as well. Now talking about the technical uh, aspect of the stock, as you can see here, it's been trading kind of like, um, it's still bearish for me, obviously, but it's been trading sideways until it's uh, uh, the share price has break out in May, and again that was a result of a uh, interest rates being increasing further than expected. It was this, the stock price was actually holding pretty well around uh, forty six cents, but then with uh, economy in Australia is still booming, and 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 and, and the employment numbers is still is still very lower than expected. So what happened is uh, then uh, RBA came up and said that we might have another two or three interest rates hikes, and then obviously that led to further sell off. Again, uh, the the fundamentals of the company was exactly the same, it's just a further sell off as a result of uh, interest rates. This stock is directly tied to uh, what's going to happen with inflation and, and interest rates. And that's why I'm interested in that now, because we are, again, we are getting close to the peak of interest rate cycle. 
Uh, it could be the pivot already, it could be the, at the peak. I don't think RBA will say, okay, well, now is the peak of interest rates. I don't think they're ever going to say that. But we need to understand uh, that when that happens and be exposed to potential opportunities, especially company deaths that are sort of a change in structure to reduce cost and uh, potentially uh, keep growing during the next uh, 12 to 24 months. So essentially what we saw here, a really good opportunity to trade this stock just early in January where the stock went up about 108%. So, uh, and what we seen in May was a breakout, okay, breakout, but this month recently, and that's why obviously the price, share price went up about 20%, actually more than 20%, almost 30%, um, is because um, the, the the inflation numbers came lower than expected. CPI came lower than expected. And that suggests that we might see a uh, RBA putting rates on hold uh, tomorrow. Or uh, even if increasing, we might, uh, we might uh, don't see a, uh, a further increase after. That's what probably the market is pricing here. But most important for the long term, a um, average uh, of the share price. I think it's uh, it, it's fundamentally and and technically undervalued at the current levels, and that's why I'm interested on that stock. I was interested to put up an analysis for you here of this stock. Okay, so for me, is um, a buy. Obviously, you gotta understand that the company needs to deliver its cost reduction and inventory reduction as well. But as long as revenue is increasing and uh, and 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 having its partner selling uh, still also increasing the sales, then I think we could see a uh, really good bounce into uh, this stock price, which is currently trading at thirty seven cents, uh, towards the next twenty four months. And when I'm talking about really good uh, bounce, we potentially could see another lot of one hundred percent rise on the stock price from here. If we start, uh, if investors feel that interest rates have peaked, that's that's what I think is. And part of the job here is not just looking to the fundamentals and the technical, but also the sentiment of the market towards some particular sector and specifically some particular stocks as well. A lot of pain on the retail sector altogether, but this could be an opportunity, guys. Uh, Hope you enjoy. Let us know what you think about uh, CCX. Yeah, if you like the video, you don't like the video, I'm always asked to put comments in there. Make your questions as well. You want to put questions for us. I'm always happy to answer all the questions. So thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video. Uh, bye. <music>when we designed BG Trading BGS 20 strategy was to use only a set number of indicators to make it simple and clear to understand and to be able to apply our KPIs very easily and very effectively. So you don't have to be any Wall Street smart person to be able to apply those strategies. We really hope this course will help you to make better decisions and make successful trades. See you in the course.